about conjunctival anterior segment tumors. Uh, this is a long lecture, but uh, we'll make it uh, summarize. We have questions uh, to be raised, um, which is the most common conjunctival tumor, as well as what is the most common conjunctival epithelial tumor. And uh, we'll talk about the behavior of conjunctival tumors and the factors that determine recurrences as well as iris inclusion cyst clinical course. We know that uh, the proportion of malignant versus benign conjunctival tumors uh, is 40 to 60%. The most common um, malignant tumors, uh, uh, according to KKH statistics, is retinoblastoma. However, the most common ones um, is uh, squamous cell carcinoma, the conjunctiva uh, that affect the conjunctiva. Conjunctival tumors uh, can be um, classified into congenital, vascular, epithelial, and pigmented. Um, the congenital ones um, being the choristomas, which is uh, dermoid or dermolipoma, usually location-wise is uh, the temporal uh, epibulbar uh, or limbal, and it consists of uh, dermis-like um, uh, uh, collagen, as well as all the accessories such as um, uh, sweaty glands, hair spacious glands, and fat lobules, as you can see in this histopath uh, specimen. And this can be also inherited as bilateral and can involve 360 degrees limbal involvement. These are pictures of limbal uh, dermoid you can see in here. Um, this can be treated conservatively by doing nothing or by shaving it, having better cosmesis, or by uh, removing it and putting lamellar keratoplasty. One of the things that can determine the extent of the dermoid uh, um, is uh, by doing OCT over the dermoid itself. Uh, another congenital lesion, such as dermolipoma, where fat is prominent and there is no cutaneous structures. And this can be associated with uh, different syndromes, such as golden hair syndromes, and can also be associated with colobomas or um, central nervous system uh, problems. These are other examples that extension of limbal from the limbus uh, to uh, the outer part of the cornea, or you can have also solitary lacrimal gland in here or dermal lipoma. Um, uh, lacrimal glands can be ectopic and can be simple or uh, complex and may be associated with the um, ectopia, the palpable lobe, and it is usually highly vascularized and may extend um, to or isolated to the cornea itself. Uh, the vascular tumors uh, is usually abnormal dilatation of blood vessels uh, or blood vessels sometimes. Uh, present in an anomalous uh, way and they may present with prolonged uh, irritation associated with systemic disease such as thyroid pharmacopathy or other um, uh, syndromics such as uh, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia that is usually autosomal dominance and involve in mucous membranes. Uh, biogenic granuloma can follow any um, episodes of inflammatory conditions, trauma, or surgery. It can be also located in different areas in the conjunctiva, in the cornea, palpebral conjunctiva, and usually consists of numerous blood vessels present. These are telangiectasis uh, present in the inferior that is associated with some central nervous system problems. Um, the capillary hemangioma um, is uh, either alone or associated with orbital hemangioma. They usually present in light, but may uh, grow rapidly and then regress spontaneously before age uh, of five. And the treatment is by just leaving them, or if you have some cosmesis, can be injected with steroids in the lesion itself or by excising it. This is uh, an example of uh, capillary hemangioma that is present 
and then few parts uh, of the um, conjunct tab and was excised completely. And this is a post operative picture. The cavernous hemangioma, however, is uh, present in deeper locations and they regress, but less, less frequently, and also needs conservative treatment. Lymphangioma is usually more or less slowly progressive. It may involve uh, the orbit, it can be bilateral, and it can also extend from the orbit to the conjunctiva or present in the conjunctiva itself. So, and let's yeah, frequent. Um, A uh, frequent um, uh, uh, hemorrhage and the cyst itself give rise to chocolate cysts. Lymphangiectasis, uh, though, uh, is an acquired non progressive of uh, existing lymphatics that dilates and can be seen uh, in different parts of the conjunctiva, uh, especially in the pulp of conjunctiva. Uh, their treatment uh, is difficult because they move from one place to another and um, it doesn't require any treatment except um, for cosmetic reasons by doing surgery. Though, if you do surgery, sometimes they require another place. This is a solitary lymphangioma. And these are lymphangiectasis. as you can see, blood vessels present in here. Um, uh, the conjunctiva appears traumatic. And um, this is a, a patient who presented a couple of months ago to myself. And you can see um, with the video, um, this is a present and the inferotemporal. You can squeeze it and you can see dilation of the blood vessels uh, there after squeezing it through the lid. Um, epithelial inclusion cysts, this is more or less uh, behaves like malignant in many cases. Uh, usually follows trauma or surgery, especially strabismus or um, uh, retinal surgery. And it, it consists of nests of epithelial cells that usually um, proliferate under the conjunctival of surface and then form a cavity uh, lined by uh, epithelium and also contains uh, fluid. And the fluid uh, depends on the um, epithelial source itself. If it is, it is a transudate, if it is just a uh, normal conjunctiva, if it, and it will be mucin with turbid or milky material, if it is from a mucin secreting source. As you can see, this is post traumatic. Um, uh, inclusion cyst. This is another cyst following trauma with communication to the anterior chamber. It can grow hugely uh, and it requires a major surgery. Um, this is an interesting um, um, patient who had um, ehlers danlos syndrome and um, because of thin cornea, of this patient, he needed uh, supportive tissue to um, strengthen the cornea itself. Um, and uh, after doing this, keratu patch and removing the epithelium, and then the conjunctiva epithelium at the limbus um, is usually suture over the keratu patch, which is 12.5. Patient developed epithelial uh, inclusion cyst between the host cornea and the keratal patch. With time, it came as just opacities, and then with time, the host cornea, which is thin, is pushed uh, posteriorly, causing some um, cystic formation with a fluid level and turbid milky material present between the two layers, the keratal patch and the posterior cornea. This required a treatment, and after removing the keratin patch, uh, cleaning the epithelial cells with, um, uh, with um, alcohol, and then putting the a new keratin patch and suturing it. The patient has been followed for a year um, without any problem. Uh, this was reported by Arif Khan and Kaptan, uh, an uh, 
others who were presented with congenital corneal pacifications bilaterally and with the ultrasound they revealed uh, that the patient has corneal cysts between the posterior, posterior layer, thin layer, and by pathology, this was confirmed. So uh, corneal pacification may present with some cystic formation. Um, another form of um, benign uh, condition, which is called pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. It is usually a reactive hyperplasia of the conjunct type or can be in the cornea and develops in weeks or months and usually um, present with the hyperkeratotic uh, surface with central amplification and the conjunct type. And sometimes it's confused with uh, dysplasia or oasis and and um, usually lacks the red, regular red dots of the capillaries that we see sometimes in papillomas. These are some pictures of leukoplakic uh, with keratoreconteomatic kind of from the literature. Um, the, um, usually it is uh, consists of masses of squamous cell epithelium found in the underlying tissue. Uh, the ATP is not marked, and sometimes there is inflammation with an infocytic infiltration. And there is a transition zone into normal epithelium, which is not present in the tumors itself and the squamous cell carcinoma itself. This is the differentiating. This is another picture where um, invasive picanthosis is a present and where fossil keratin was present and deeper in the epithelium. Uh, papillomas or uh, squamous epithelial papillomas uh, usually uh, it's, uh, can be pedunculated or societal or conjunctival. It has some fibrovascular points where the red dots uh, clinically appear, and um, it is usually translucent by appearance and lessening, and it is non keratinized and can be pigmented in plaques. As in this patient, a child who has bilateral involvement with papilloma, uh, you can see the glistening part and you can see the papillae form uh, due to the core, uh, uh, the blood vessels in the core itself. And this is multiple sections um, indicating presence of blood vessels on these. And these are the papillae that appears clinically. It can be located anywhere in the conjunctiva. It can be vocal or scattered and diffuse. And it is more um, uh, in children, sometimes associated with papilloma virus. And there is no potential for precancers. This patient presented to me a couple of weeks ago, and we thought that this is papilloma. This is an adult with non seeing eye, right eye, and seeing eye and left eye. He had a solitary uh, in one eye, and the other eye has also pedunculated the lesions. Both of them were. Uh, excised under topical anesthesia. And uh, it uh, tends to be biogenic granioma mimicking papilloma. Uh, the treatment for papilloma is by simple excision, sometimes with cryotherapy to the base. The problem is the recurrence is more frequent um, because of new lesions that appear. This is a keratoclanthoma, similar to the ones that we see in a conjunctiva. You can see the Amplication in the central part of the cornea. The precancerous uh, epithelial lesions uh, mainly is zero derma pigmentosa. And uh, this is relatively common. And uh, in a review of clinical manifestation of 10 cases, they usually uh, present uh, or uh, have these signs of uh, lead freckles with atrophic skin lesions and associated with many uh, corneal scarring, uh, conjunctival scarring, teresia, uh, extropion, as well as malignancies that affect ocular surface, uh, lids, and tongue. You can see the prickles are present, and usually their uh, tumors, if they're present, are, behave very aggressively with a lot of recurrences. And every, a review on one of the literature of 830 published cases, the survival age is much less than normal individuals. And the ocular involvement is 
that involves LEDs, conjunctiva, and cornea, and uh, also the LEDs with different uh, deformities and new plasmas. Uh, a common, uh, the most common epithelial malignant tumors uh, of the conjunctiva is OSSN, which is a new term replacing intraepithelial conjunctiva or corneal neoplasia. And this consists of all of these carcinoma in situ, squamous cell carcinoma, and tripetelial epithelioma or neoplasia. And this is the term that is commonly used and accepted. And uh, the first name, which is uh, intra, is done by Lee and Hairston in 1995. And uh, as I mentioned, OSSN is a spectrum of uh, uh, all. Uh, dysplastic uh, uh, changes, uh, carcinoma in situ and invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, the incidence is very variable, depends on the country. For example, if it is in USA compared with Australia, is uh, less than eight per million versus 19 in Australia. And different uh, putative uh, mutagenic factors implicated in the pathogenesis of SSN. There are uh, related terms that we should know about CINN, uh, which is hyperkeratosis, which is increased in keratinization in the cornea and the conjunctiva. If you have persistent nuclei in the keratin layer, it is keratosis. Or if you have increase in thickness of the epithelium, it is acanthosis. Or if you have retention uh, or premature keratinizations uh, before they reach the surface in this, this keratosis. And these are usually present in some degree with the changes of OSSN. Uh, the conjunctival tumors in a review of 126 cases, CIN is the most common one. In a previous study at Kekish uh, by Abdelaziz al Rajhi myself, and also in a previous one uh, done uh, in earlier times where 100 eyes have been uh, collected and with a minimum follow-up of six months. What we found that five patients had bilateral involvement. Two eyes were excluded because they were treated somewhere else and one of them is six months, less than six months follow-up. The most common presenting symptom is mass lesion followed by these other symptoms such as the shared division, redness or pain. And there is some correlations between lesion size versus invasion. The larger the size, the more invasive, as you can see, 31% versus 4%. The tissue involvement, especially with intraocular invasion, is cornea, most commonly, followed by sclera and then ciliary body and other tissues. The treatment that were <clears throat> done for these patients, mainly excision or excision with cryotherapy, uh, and many of these cases are presenting about 75% of the cases. Because of aggressiveness of the tuber, uh, some of them, they ended by enucleation or exenteration, and maybe because also of uh, ignorance. For this case, we'll talk about it uh, in, uh, on another slide, the one who ended by penetrating keratoblast. The overall recurrences, <clears throat> which is the common complications for after, um, after treatment is 25% uh, recurred. None of these 100 patients uh, had medical therapy because it was before the era of medical therapy. Uh, the recurrences are similar, whether it is invasive versus non-invasive. The most common determining factors to, for recurrences is involvement of surgical margins. If you have surgical margin, the conjunctiva excision, if they have still tumors, there is 50% chance of the tumors to recur versus 20% because of the margins are free. And this is why <clears throat> it is advisable to have wide excision about two millimeter beyond the tumor itself. With the cryotherapy of uh, the conjunctival margin, or if it is invasive or suspect invasion, the scleral bed itself. 
What's happened to the age? We have patients who have younger than 30 years of age. Um, some of them, 12 patients, total of 14 eyes. Some of them, five of them have zero pigmentosa. But there are other patients who, as young as five years, have been affected and diagnosed with OSS. Uh, the predisposing factors and conditions is mainly zero derma pigmentosa. There are cases associated with pterygium, but it could be misdiagnosed before. Um, and this is what we mentioned, the recurrences um, is not related to the degree of invasiveness. Uh, this is why sometimes you have more frequent recurrences in non-invasive versus invasive cases. So um, the summary of the uh, cases is uh, of these 100 uh, cases, uh, it is an aggressive disease, uh, disease in Saudi Arabia, 10% present. Prepare 13 months after surgical dissection. And this is why it is extremely important to have follow up of two years is essential. <clears throat> the exenteration rate uh, is not. Uh, doctor, your mic, please. Um, the clinical features usually affects the middle age, uh, rarely children and young adults. And the appearance of osis and can be translucent, gelatinous, leukoplakic, papillomatous, fungating, and may mimic also chronic conjunctivitis or calcific corneal scar. And can also present as a great geographical corneal opacity, as has been reported and as we have seen. Mass lesions, the most common one, pigmented lesions, unilateral keratin conjunctivitis, amplifarospasm. Uh, these are the finger light uh, epithelial opacification of the cornea that may present as an extension of lumbar movement or just solidity of the cornea. These sometimes wax and win, change in positions, progress, and they just need epithelial removal if there is no limbal involvement. This patient presents Omanium in the last year who has, uh, who presented, uh, 75 who presented uh, unilateral corneal opacifications, uh, which is very superficial. You can see in here different slides, as well as in here magnification. Uh, and I think we have a slit uh, video that present, doesn't have any limbal tissue involvement. And this can mimic just a superficial corneal pacification and is presenting symptoms, not only vision, but even irritation. And then this was excised uh, by just peeling of the epithelium and subjecting it for pathology. And that was addicted, ad uh, adequate for the treatment and cure of this disease. Patient had um, the patient um, ended by having clear cornea and no recurrence in a couple of months. And this is the pathology following this. Uh, squamous cell carcinoma, the conjunctiva. Uh, can also present uh, an epilephorospasm as in this patient, and pterygium-like lesion, as well as in this patient itself, uh, uh, or chronic conjunctivitis, or papillomatous, or finger-like you know, basification with blood vessels. And uh, um, a case that has been followed, um, uh, uh, 17 cases, one of them have some uh, finger-like uh, projections, 
this is different times of the year that has been followed. And you can see change in size as well as configuration of the epithelial line. The loco location is the most common one is the limbus, but can be present in any and can be also an isolated cornea. Although many people believe that there isn't anything um, called existing corneal um, neoplasia, but has been reported and we have seen it. Uh, this can be uh, completely excised uh, with the uh, help of limbal stem cell um, transplantation later on, or just a genetic membrane transplantation in this case. This is the case, which is interesting, who had a pterygium excision somewhere else. And then because of thinning, uh, the surgeon ended by having a donut-shaped um, um, uh, lamellar keratoplasty. I have followed this patient later, and I found that his pacification has been increasing. Um, and then uh, we decided to do uh, um, penetrating keratoplasty and found some tumor cells between the grafted donut-shaped uh, cornea and his, his cornea. And this has embedded to the cornea itself. This is why it is important to leave the cornea um, uh, without any additional tissue for at least two years. Um, there is a predilection of the limbus because of increased mitotic activity and because of exposure of interpalpebral zone. Um, and this is uh, the case uh, uh, that's presented at Kekesh and uh, treated by just penetrating keratoplasty and uh, removing the lesion uh, as well as the opacification. This was done by one of our colleagues, Jim Cameron and with good success. So it can exist with just solitary cornea lesion. There are other uh, unusual presentations. Um, uh, one of them is perforations, whether they present uh, as uh, the presenting sign or uh, it can be following uh, recurrences. These are fungating lesions um, uh, with uh, neglected um, squamous cell carcinoma of the conjunctiva. It is rare, but this can happen. This is the same patient who presents with blepharospasm. You can see his legion is more or less like a pterygium with thinning superiorly and inferiorly. A uh, patient um, had a frozen section excision um, uh, at that time uh, without uh, any free margins, and then he lost follow up, and 11 months later, he presented with a perforated uh, lumbar tissue with the recurrences and um, the tumor has invaded the ciliary body and iris uh, um, and ended by um, uh, any case. But these are the fungating uh, by uh, clinical and pathological uh, specimens. A spontaneous structure of the globe it can present as a primary or a secondary cases as well as young age group have been also reported uh, younger than 30 years of age. Uh, the diagnosis for uh, OSS and is mainly clinical appearance, but it can be also assisted by rose bengal staining. OCT nowadays is extremely helpful, pap smear or cellulose paper, or sometimes biopsy. This is differential diagnosis that consists of degenerative uh, conditions, uh, chronic inflammations uh, and the conjunctiva, biogenic granuloma, or other uh, tumors itself. Uh, the treatment widely, uh, most widely used is excision with um, cryotherapy um, and uh, sometimes combined. The medical uh, uh, or current treatment options for conjunctiva or corneal intraepineoplasia or OSSN consists mainly of three medications, mitomycin C, 5-FU, and interferon alpha-2B. And the concentration is 0.02 or 2.04% mitomycin, and usually given as eye drops four times uh, a day, sometimes four um, days a week, or uh, in different courses, two to four weeks, with um, uh, um, free zone of uh, no treatment for two to four weeks and then followed depending on the response. Um, 
uh, and same thing with the 5 if you one percent or interferon alpha to beta eye drops one million units and this can also be injected uh, into the lesion itself the um, uh, efficacy of these three medications are very similar however the side effects is more it was five a few and this can also be adjunct with uh, treatment um, uh, with the excision itself you can use the drops as well as after excision especially if it is very extensive the indication whether to do surgery or this depends on the clinical case itself um, uh, status of the other eye um, uh, as well as the status of the patient himself um, the disadvantage that you uh, don't have any tissue uh, to confirm your diagnosis uh, this is a classification of drugs uh, mechanism of action as well as the topical treatment of these three commonly used um, uh, medication um, um, because of clinical practice has changed uh, this is why uh, many corneal surgeons before the uh, having as a primary treatment for uh, OSS and um, they were treating them uh, surgically now it is 50 percent and 10 years period so uh, the pattern of treatment treatment has changed with time the problem with the series sometimes ended with some complications such as not only recurrences but even uh, limbal stem cell deficiency, scarring, uh, simpliform formation, uh, and other uh, complications. There is topical cytopovir uh, treatment, uh, which is usually reported after failure of uh, treatment and after excision. And this usually um, uh, uh, given uh, drops between four weeks to six weeks time. It is always advisable if you intend to have excision, to have wide excision, um, and to determine this by those Bengal. And sometimes you do a keratectomy or um, uh, a partial sclerectomy if it is very inflated. The recurrences is very variable from 8 to 40 percent, being the average 25 percent. And the involved margins is 53 percent, 5 percent in certain studies. Um, uh, does it metastasize? Yes, it does. It is extremely rare. It um, may indicate that uh, our disease here is more aggressive. Um, this is why 10 cases have been uh, reported to have some regional metastasis as well as distant metastasis. The recurrence usually comes in the first 24 months, most commonly in the first year. This is why following them up, uh, at least for the first year is extremely important. Nine of 11 cases or nine recurred within 11 months. Um, we move to pigmented lesions, um, uh, which is nevi. Um, nevi is the most common conjunctival uh, tumor. Uh, present usually as congenital, it can be flat or elevated. Uh, usually it becomes uh, pigmented at puberty and sometimes increase in size. And it is the most common, and 20% of malignant melanomas arise from nevi. The melanocytic uh, proliferation in the conjunctiva are more abundant uh, and, uh, and active in blacks. Uh, for nevi, they are usually five. <clears throat> the first three are very similar, conjunctional, subepithelial, or compound, and this classification is mainly histopathology. Sometimes clinically is very difficult to differentiate blue nevi or congenital melanocytosis or nevosopota. For junctional, the um, uh, tumor is usually in the junction between the epithelium and subepithelium, uh, and the subepithelium is deeper in the layers. And the compound is similar to the junctional, but it is more or less uh, involving the deeper layers of uh, 
suffer of that epithelium. And they all move with the conjunctiva, so it can be mobilized as you move the conjunctiva. The compound anuva is more or less brown and sometimes associated with the cystic lesions. Uh, these are examples of neva in the conjunctiva. Uh, these are the cysts the present with pathology. And sometimes this is depicted by uh, OCT itself. The blue neva is uh, either blue or gray and uh, with diffuse pigmentation, it doesn't move with the conjunctiva and um, it presents in the subepithelial tissue deeper than above. Um, Congenital melanosis or uh, congenital ocular melanosis, which is a primary, they have diffuse blue UI, uh, unilateral, um, and um, associated with also epsilateral uvia nevi uh, or heterochromia. And um, uh, these are the clinical example. You can see the blue nevi here present in one side involving the skin as well as the conjunctiva and the iris and sometimes present with um, dark irides as in this heterochromia present uh, in this patient. The acquired melanosis is more significant and important because of the precancerous um, uh, situation of this kind of melanosis. And it is a flat unilateral with diffuse uh, brown pigmentation. It moves with the conjunctiva, such as in these lesions. Racial melanosis is most common condition of intraepithelial conjunctiva melanosis seen in blacks. And sometimes you can see it uh, in the cornea by having streaks or holes of pigments at the peripheral parts of the cornea. The malignant melanoma of the conjunctiva is usually present with raised pigmented, uh, or it can be non-pigmented. Um, where they come from? Where they come from? They come from um, um, Dino over ten percent. New by 20%, and mostly from acquired melanosis. Rare in blacks, and only six cases reported between 1952 and um, 72 and two, 20 years. These are the melanomas present in the conjunctiva, you can see. Uh, there are other uh, forms of rare conjunctiva tumors, and uh, this is uh, sometimes very difficult to. Uh, to diagnose, but it is extremely important to know for differential diagnosis. And the spindle cell carcinoma, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, choristomas, and so on. And these are examples like this one, spindle cell carcinoma, um, with the intraocular extension and apocrine uh, cyst adenoma, uh, nodular melanomas, and um, blastocytoma. or conjunctival myxomas, you can see them here, salmon patch, as, uh, or in the current kelp, such as the next cell tumors, or fibrous hysterocytoma, or xanthal granulomas, as you can see, uh, present in this patient in particular, who presented to us with um, cornea handing. PKP and similar condition treated in Germany, and his uh, right eye present with this tumor covering the whole cornea. And you can see that a uh, patient um, um, having a large tumor covering the cornea, and with the excision of this, we thought this is lipoma. Um, we found that the cornea has been melted and eaten by the tumor itself and ended by doing a penetrating keratoplasty, um, uh, which is large. And later um, he had also cataract formation that ended by cataract extraction. Uh, 
It is extremely diseased and it is characterized by a presence of four main histocytes and two twin giant cells. And this is why the xanthan granuloma affecting the cornea and a bilateral condition, uh, which is extremely rare. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we move to iris tumor nearby is the most common one. And um, uh, um, for the malignant melanomas, usually um, spindle cell melanoma, and uh, they have some uh, features. It can be excited by just doing a redectomy. Um, our iridocyclectomy, cyclectomy, which is involving. This patient uh, presented with um, a lesion in his uh, cornea. You can see his pupil as well as iris has some distortion, some blood vessels are present with some um, hemorrhage. There is some extropion um, present. So these are all signs uh, of uh, melanoma of the iris rather than nearby ended by excision and with the suturing of the defect. And because of tension, this has broken down, causing some um, uh, light sensitivities um, issues. And uh, because of the uh, uh, request of the patient to deal with this uh, coloboma, we order um, uh, customized fashionable uh, iris procedure, artificial iris from Dr. Schmidt's company. Uh, and this has to be matched with the color of the iris. And this was cut and sutured in place with good success. Uh, if this is small, if the malignant melanoma is small, it's very difficult to appreciate from nearby. And these are the signs of uh, malignancy. Uh, ectropion, iridis, vascularization, um, uh, prefrontal synechia, sector um, um, cataract or glaucoma, and increase in growth, of course. Um, as you can see, some distortion with presence of the tumor itself approaching the angle or even occluding it. And some of these uh, ciliary body tumors can extend through the sclera itself. Another uh, melanocytoma is another uh, form, which is usually darkly pigmented. It's not as aggressive as um, uh, melanomas, uh, but this can be excised. This was diagnosed by aspirating this to confirm diagnosis through the cornea. And then later, after confirming diagnosis, sector iridectomy uh, with the tumor excision and dissecting it from the cornea was adequate without any recurrences. Uh, iris pigment epithelial cyst is um, more or less benign uh, cyst. It doesn't require any treatment uh, except if it uh, has some symptoms such as um, pressure symptoms or floaters. And they are usually composed of both layers of neural tidermal dyes. Um, better seen uh, after dilation, especially if they are peripheral or mid-zonal, they can be pigmented and transillumerated. It can be also detached into the vitreous cavity um, and the floats uh, in the vitreous cavity, causing some um, um, uh, floaters. And we have seen one uh, case, as well as an, another uh, case, which is more or less not mobile. And uh, it can be also in the anterior chamber itself. Um, it may require sometimes the, uh, require the, the removing it. Um, from the anterior chamber. This can be classified to pupillary, mid-zonal, and peripheral. Mm -hmm. And with the peripheral ones, you have to dilate the pupil to see them. This is a solitary one detached in the vitreous cavity. These are pupillary uh, lesions. Um, sometimes the ciliary body cysts can be seen uh, with color bones. We move to iris inclusion cyst, um, uh, as this is usually commonly uh, after uh, trauma or uh, surgery, it can follow any kind of trauma where a conjunctival epithelium is usually uh, inoculated into the iris tissue and the growth of this epithelial cells and the, and the iris tissue uh, lead to um, epithelial inclusion system. This usually grows very fast and behave like malignant and can be excised as soon as possible. 
this is the lesion that we saw that has some kind of epithelial um, uh, cyst that grow between the layer of the host cornea and the um, implanted keratopatch patch over the cornea itself. Um, for iris cysts, um, um, I have videos uh, because we have almost uh, more than 20 cases managed by uh, doing a visco dissection from the cornea, aspirating the uh, lesion itself and doing sector iridectomy without any need for sclerosing agents such as alcohol or with the uh, M block dissection as it is done and reinforced by other surgeons. This is an indication of a tumor that has been followed for years. You can see uh, starting from being small to growing, uh, approaching the pupil. So this should not be left in place. It has to be excited as soon as the diagnosis is made. Juvenile xanthogranuloma affects the children in, um, uh, and 85% of the cases are less than one year and usually present with unilateral yellow brown and prominent blood vessels. This is why they may lead to spontaneous uh, hyphema because of these blood vessels with corneal staining. and may present also with heterochromia and unilateral glaucoma. can be associated with skin lesion that can be single or multiple. Um, and the pathology usually have some granulomatous diffuse infiltration with lipid containing histocytes and Teuton giant cells. And other tissues have been involved itself. These are the skin lesions as the pathology of these. Thank you very much.